Hey there, Doug from Combology here. In this video, we're going to build a pretty neat and really useful way of putting a customer's or a student's user profile into the navigation of your website. This is a great place to put the user profile, the logout link, and to personalize and kind of elevate your course presentation. What's really neat about this is that we can edit this in two different places depending on your website. We can do it here inside of Thrive Apprentice under the Design tab if we click Edit Design. Alternatively, you can do this in Thrive Theme Builder. I think the main difference here is whether you want to have a header that's pretty much the same across your entire website for your courses and for the rest of your website, or if you just want it for your courses. If you have a subdomain and it's just your courses, it probably doesn't really matter. So in this case, we're going to assume that we have a normal website with Thrive Apprentice on the main website, and we're going to edit the design of Thrive Apprentice so that just the Thrive Apprentice area contains this header. So inside Thrive Apprentice, we'll go to design and we'll click edit design. Then we'll click on manage templates because this is how I like to get into the editing of this section. And then we're gonna look for one of the templates that currently uses the header in our Thrive Apprentice School. A great one to use is the default school homepage uh, or any of the lessons we'll do, typically any of your templates that are using the header that you want to edit. For me, we're going to edit my school homepage. I've actually duplicated this so that we can play around and I won't break my live site, uh, but this is my school homepage template and we have our header at the top. So essentially what we're doing is we're taking the custom menu inside of our header and we're going to create a user profile section, typically off to the right hand side. And here we currently have member dashboard, courses, and a logout link. So let's make some tweaks here. So for this to really work well, what we want to do is use a menu that's not pulling from WordPress. If it's pulling from WordPress like this current menu, then we're going to not have a lot of the same options. So in this case, I'm just going to delete my current menu and start over. Might be a good exercise for us. Let's open up our element tray and do a quick little search for custom. You'll see there's a custom menu. You could have searched for menu as well. Drop that into the page and let's just do a standard drop down menu. That'll work great. And we're going to create a custom menu. Now you can choose a template here, uh, but I caution if you're going to choose some of these, they don't necessarily play nice with what we're going to do. You want something pretty simple because we're going to use this for a simple nature. So let's just choose basic. So let's start by making some changes. We still have our custom menu selected. On the left hand side, now we have the ability to look at our menu items here inside of our Thrive Apprentice design theme builder of sorts, right? We're editing the header. So we can edit our navigation items. We don't need all of these. I'll for sure get rid of some of these drop downs, uh, and I might just have three total. So the first one might just be like our homepage or school homepage or courses page. So we can add that in and we could type courses, click apply. And then we probably want to add the member dashboard, something like that. We'll just have that be uh, linked there. And we'll drag that on top. So you can reorder these by grabbing these little dots on the far left hand side. And then our last one, we wanna change this one to be something like profile. And I recommend that you link this one to the user profile page. So I have a user profile page on my course website. I think I have a tutorial for that on the channel. Now, there's a couple things we wanna make some changes to. So at the bottom of this section, notice there's a show when option. Now it doesn't make sense to show the user profile if they're currently logged out. So we want to show this when they are logged in, click apply. And we probably wanna change member dashboard to also show when they're logged in. Although I guess it makes sense. You could have the member dashboard available if somebody's logged out. That, that sounds okay to me. Uh, so we'll go ahead and leave that as always as well. Click apply. Okay, that's the basis for our custom menu. Now let's go ahead and make some changes. The first one, I always like to just change the typography so that it's readable. I think on my, my Convology Blue, white is a good option. And then with the custom menu selected, make sure you're on custom menu in the uh, breadcrumbs. Let's go to layout and position and align it right. That pushes our profile off to the right hand side, uh, which I personally like more. Now we're going to be editing the far right one here, the profile. And we want to change profile without changing the other two. So let's click on this little green lock so that the profile now has a red border and a red lock. That means any changes we make to profile will not be made to the other two. Now notice in our breadcrumbs, we have menu item as where we're at. That's great, that's where we want to be because on the left-hand side under main options, we have a section called display and here it's set to text only, but if I expand it out, we find that we actually have several more options and the one we're going to use is image only. 
you could create an icon only option, something like this, where if I choose icon only and I change that icon from a star, I click the little pencil icon, I could search for something like user or I could search for profile, something like this image right here and I click select or icon rather, not image. And then if I increase the size of it so it makes more sense, something along those lines. Now that could look like a generic user profile image and that's that's okay, that's actually pretty good. Uh, but instead of icon only, let's change to image only and then come over and click on the image itself. Now instead of editing menu item in the breadcrumbs, we're editing menu item image. We can choose on the left hand side under main options, dynamic. And when we choose dynamic, we can choose the user image. Now notice that the user image on the right changed. This has changed now to use the Gravatar or the universal avatar uh, system that's kind of shared across the web for this image, which means this can be dynamic and your users can affect what image appears here. Now, depending on the image that they've uploaded, in my case, I uploaded a square image with a white background. It doesn't look so great, but we can make some changes. If we go to borders and corners on the left-hand side, and we up the borders as high as it'll go, maybe like 160 or 100 plus, whatever turns this into a circle. And now that's actually looking pretty good. Okay, now with our menu item selected in the breadcrumbs, so if you had, for example, the image clicked on, you could just click on menu item in the breadcrumbs. Now we are back to editing the menu item, in this case, the unlocked version. This is where we selected image only. Now what's still really nice about the fact that we have that selected is that we still have a link on this. You'll recall we had set this to the profile page. I want to leave it that way. So just make sure you still have that selected. Now under custom menu in the breadcrumbs, we can come back and we can add more menu items. So if I click add new and then I click the pencil on item number four, I could call this profile or my profile. And then we can also link this to the profile page might be a good user experience to give people the option. We'll show this when logged in. And then if you grab the little dots on the left-hand side and you inset it under the profile that we just created, you'll notice now that when on the right-hand side, I hover over my icon or my image for my user, I now have a dropdown. And we also have this little carrot on the right-hand side. Now, I'm not too fond of the way that that looks. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but I'd rather just hover over the image and not have this carrot taking up more space. So here on the left-hand side, uh, the, yep, this is still under main options. Instead of angle, choose none. And now our image has shifted over to the right. But if I hover over it, I still have my profile. Now what we can do is we can click add new, edit this item again, and we can say log out. And we're going to need to put a log out link. Now this is pretty easy. Click the dynamic link option under button link. It's the far right one. And we're going to choose site and we're going to choose log out. In a recent update to Thrive, I believe it was this past week in fact, we have the ability now to redirect after successful logout. I think that's pretty neat. And now users will be redirected to my dashboard. And of course we can change this to only show when logged in, because that makes sense. And now we'll just drag that underneath the profile. And when we hover over the image, we see my profile and log out. There's plenty more customization you can do here. You can use a mega menu instead, had we selected a mega menu, or you can click on each of these individual elements here, again, where you see menu item, and we can change things like the background instead of it being white, it could be more of our brand color. We could change that color to, to white as well. We can expand out, make it look different. There's lots of things that we can do here. Pretty simple tutorial, right? I just think that's a really neat touch and a nice way to add a user profile element, something personalized that makes your website presentation, in this case, particularly for our Thrive Apprentice header section, just a little bit more polished, a little bit more custom. And again, you could have done this in Thrive Theme Builder instead of in Thrive Apprentice templates in case you wanted this to be site-wide. And in that case, I would have made that image or that menu item only appear if the user were logged in. So that's actually a pretty neat way of having no image in the header. They log in and then bloop, it pops up and it's there for them to click on. And you could even have the member dashboard tucked under there as well. Whatever user experience you're wanting to offer to your students. All right, but that's the end of this tutorial. If you have any questions about Thrive Suite or Thrive Apprentice in this case, feel free to leave a comment down below or check out one of my courses at Convology.com. But that'll do it for me. I'm Doug from Convology, and I'll see you in the next video.